first met Alan Clark when I think I was around six. I was in school. An old lady came in with this young kid. We have a Harold Clark here. He's uh, moved from a different district. Where should he sit? Well, I look around and I realize that the only free chair is next to me. So I went, me here? Alan Clark sat next to me. We've been friends ever since. Just mainly on a blend of three harmonies. That's myself, Alan and Tony. I don't know whether I must have been mumbling away a bit too close to a microphone one day, but that's where the third harmony, the, the lower harmony, came in. That made that more of a unique sound, not just a Graham Nash and Alan Clark sound, it became the Holly sound. Had this one song, which is Stop, 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 which was probably one of the first hits that we had that we wrote together. And we thought, well, that's great, it's a great song. Fancy is writing that, all great. And it got into the charts. And you know, there's nothing like success. Walking into Abbey Road to me was like walking into a cathedral. Holy is not really the right word, but it's almost the right word. On a carousel. On the carousel. We always used to do the choruses round one microphone facing each other. So that's how we used to get the, the harmonies uh, in, in perfect time. Up, down, up, down, up, down, two. Ron Richard had an incredible set of ears. He was our producer from start to finish. He knew instinctively, if we did five takes, he'd go, that's the one. And he always said, come and have a listen. For any other take, he wouldn't use that phrase. If we're in number two studio, we'd fly up that flight of stairs. We wouldn't touch the steps. Let's have a listen, Ron, you know. And we were just like little kids. And he had us in the palm of his hands because we felt so honored and fortunate to be in there. <laughs> We were doing a TV show, and I remember actually going out of the dressing room to go and get something to eat, and when I came back, I could hear these two voices singing something about Carrie Ann, Marianne, and I thought, hmm, that sounds pretty good. I better get in there, because I, I need a piece of that song. Hey, Carrie Ann, what's your game now? In 67, we started to make uh, different kind of records, mainly because of my pushing to be more experimental and be, be more creative. If you could only see me, I know exactly where I am. You wouldn't want to be me. Oh, I can assure you that I am strong. little Elton John and he did the keyboard on the Ain't Heavy's My Brother and quite a few other recordings of ours. I think we paid him £12. Um, if we used him today he'd want more. Nine or ten months after I left the Hollies, Crosby, Stills and Nash played Woodstock and I think well because I've left what are the Hollies gonna do and what do they do is they turn around and record a number one record. I mean screw them. Who gave them permission to do that after I left? <laughs> One thing I, I'm aware of through the Hollis career is that our catalogue is so diverse, so we really haven't fallen into any category. People loved us for, for who we were. Mums would love us to marry their daughters because we, we were a safe option. We were just a great group that sang great songs and had a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. 